Greetings folks. Today we're going to look at the data direction register and how to use pin mode. So we're going to come down here and take a look at the pin mode function. So this function is fairly easy to use. It only has two arguments, the pin number on the Arduino board and then the mode that you want to put it in. Remember these are bidirectional general purpose input output ports. So they can be programmed to either be an, an input mode or an output mode. And there is also an input pull-up mode. This uses a pull-up resistor so that you can have a passive switch instead of an active external circuit that you're going to read. So that's a, a convenience. All right. If I want to take a particular pin on the board, I simply throw in that pin number and then the mode I want to put it in. So the pin on the board is literally what we see, right? So here we have the headers on the top and on the bottom. So we have uh, these input pins, right? 0, 1, 2, 3, up to 13 here. And then uh, we have A0 through A5 on this guy down here. Now each one of these corresponds to a particular bit on a particular port. There are three ports, port B, port C, and port D. And these are 8-bit ports. So we can have a little mapping. All right, so here we have the Arduino designator. For example, we see bit 0 happens to be bit 0 on port D. All those A01 and so forth, those are all port Cs. And then the port Bs are over here starting at pin, Arduino pin 8. All right, so Arduino pin 8 is actually bit 0 of port B and Arduino pin 9 is bit 1 of port B, and so on and so forth. In this column, we just have other connections that this is used for. PWM is uh, pulse width modulation, which is a sort of a pseudo analog output that we'll be looking at later. ADC, these are the analog to digital converter inputs. And pin 13 over here is connected up to the built-in LED. Okay, so if we wanted to set the... Uh, Arduino pin number 8 to output mode, right? So that's like we like we said here, bit 0 of uh, port B is pin 8. This is the call. Pin mode, 8, output. Done, right? So output is a predefined uh, uh, term. We just make sure it's capital, right? Uppercase. And that's all you do. Um, that's fine, great, dandy. Well, what's actually going on inside? Let's take a look at the code. This is a slightly modified version of pin mode, just to make it a little bit more clear. So here are the two arguments we're passing in, the pin and the mode. And the very first thing we have to do, we call these digital pin to bit mask and digital pin to port functions. Um, and they basically turn that pin number. So for example, if we were going to use this pin mode 8 output, right, that, that's the 8. I have to turn that back into the, um, the bit number for the associated port, and I also have to find out what that port is. So this is basically going to tell us whether we're using port B, port C, or port D. So in this case, if we throw in a, an 8, we're going to get back, oh, that's, that's uh, port B. And then the bit mask is essentially a, uh, a binary value where the particular pin, the associated bit, is set and all the other bits are set to zero. So in this case, um, the Arduino pin eight, right, happens to turn out to bit zero. So that would be a one in the LSB and then seven zeros above it. All right, so that's what the bit mask is. If we're going to use the next one up, that would be uh, six zeros, a one, and then a zero. Okay, now we take that port that we got back this possibly could give us an error. In other words, we could ask for, you know, pin 73 or something like that, and there is no um, port that maps to that. So we get back this error code, not a pin, and we just return. Right? Nothing happens. Um, otherwise, we take that port, and we get back two things from it. We get back what they call the mode register, which is basically the data direction register, and then we get the actual port Right, so the, the defined symbol port, B, C, D, or so forth. 
So now we can use those uh, to set the three inputs. Now, here are the three input, the, the three different things that you can uh, set it to, the two inputs and the output mode. Um, and the first thing I want to draw your attention to is this sort of surrounding code, the non-highlighted bit. All right, it's identical in all three cases. So what is this actually doing? Well, there is something called a status register. It's a very important register. Um, we'll look at it a little bit more later. It's detailed in the text. But basically, we need to save the status register. Okay, so we put it in this variable called old status register. CLI is basically, it, it clears the interrupt bit. That's one of the bits that's in the status register. An interrupt is a very important piece of code. You give it highest priority. It overtakes everything. And uh, sometimes we need that. Uh, you know, depending on the program, we're going to look at that again a little bit later. For now, you just have to understand it's a very high priority bit of code. So we want to stop that. We want to inhibit that in this case. So we clear that bit. We do what's needed, which is the highlight stuff. And then we reset the status register. Okay. So that's just kind of like a, a little surrounding protective code, if you will. So the interesting bit is the, is the highlighted part of it. Okay. So I'm going to just jump down to um, the output mode first. So remember, if I want output mode, what I want to do is take the data direction register and set that bit. Right. So bit is the bit pattern that we got back over here, right? The bit mask. And then reg, that's the DDR. Okay. So we simply come in and we say, all right, or it with that bit pattern. Take the current value. Okay. Because this is a pointer. Take the current value of that and simply uh, bitwise or it with the bit pattern. So that will set that particular bit. Right. It doesn't touch any of the other bits, but that particular bit it will set. Okay, boom, we're done. Now the other two, we need to do the exact opposite. For input mode, we need to clear that bit on the data direction register. So to clear it, we and it with the complement of the bit pattern. So if we were doing pin 8 on the Arduino board, right? remember that goes back to bit 0. So I have a bit pattern that's 7 zeros and a 1. Now take the complement of that, all right, that's what the tilde does. Now you have seven ones and a zero. Now you and that with the existing value of the register, so or the, the DDR. So what ends up happening? Well, that bottom bit, the least significant bit, gets cleared. All right, so that's how we clear that particular bit. So that's what's done on both cases. The only difference between these is what happens in this second little bit of code, and that is now remember, this is an input mode. These are both input modes. We're not actually going to use the port register. We're not actually going to use port B or port C or port D. On the input end, we use pin, right? Pin B, pin C, pin D. So we're not actually going to use port. So we make double duty of it. And essentially what we do is by setting the appropriate bit in the, in the port register that turns on or off the pull-up resistor. So if we set that bit, right? Remember, out um, this is the this is the port register, right? Reg is the is the DDR. So I set that bit in port, and what that does is it enables the pull-up resistor. If I clear it, right? Whenever you clear, you're you're anding with these complements. If I clear it, we disable that. So this explicitly disables the input pull-up. Okay. All right, so that's basically how uh, pin mode works. Okay, now you can directly access the data direction register. You know, I mean, DDR B is a predefined symbol, right? Just like port B or pin B. So you can access it directly. If you wanted to do what we just did, in other words, um, set the output mode for, for uh, pin 8, Okay, this is all you do. Just or it with that bit pattern, right? Hex 1. So take DDRB, whatever it is, um, or it with this. You know, the top seven bits aren't going to change, but that bottom bit mm, gets set. So that, that sets the output mode for, in other words, pin 8, all the other ones as is. Now here's the huge advantage, because, you know, let's face it, this versus a call to pin mode, in other words, versus this, is, you know, not saving a whole lot of typing, right? 
where it gets really useful is you have to do a whole bunch of things. So this little bit of code, notice there's no anding or oring here, it's just a straight equate. This explicitly sets the data direction register for port D as follows, right? I've got the top four bits are zeros, so that uh, clears those bits. The bottom four bits, that's an F, so that's, um, that's going to set all those. In other words, the pins 0 through 3 are in output mode, just like we did over here, and then the pins 4 through 7 are in input mode. Okay? Cool. And if you had forgotten here, uh, port D bits happen to match up with the pin on the board. In other words, right, so here's your port D and here's your port B. So in other words, this is port D right here, that's port B, and that's port C, right? So if you're just going to use the Arduino libraries, you don't really need to know that. You can just use pin mode. Um, but, you know, if you want to, like I said, set everything at once, this is a lot more efficient than making eight discrete calls, eight separate calls to pin mode, right? So why not do it this way? Um, you know, the, the extra material, if you will, or around these uh, calls in here, um, it's a little bit safer, right? Because you're being, being very nice about the interrupts and so forth. But if this is, uh, you know, code that you're, you're going to run once right up front, um, it's not really going to be an issue for the most part. You set up these bits, you know, once and done kind of thing. Um, and, and, who says you're going to be working with just Arduinos, right? Now, this idea, this sort of usage here, is very common through the industry. So if you're on a completely different platform, you know, you're not using an Arduino development board, you're using some different development board, completely different processor, um, they're still most likely going to use this sort of nomenclature, you know, a, a data direction register, um, you know, a, a port register, things like that. So it's good to know how to do this because it's generic. All right. Okay.